Welcome to Politically Aware. Coming up on today's show, they should have been women first. From Kwezi to Karabo and River to Rhodes, South Africa has a violent and murderous track record when it comes to femicide, rape, and other forms of gender-based violence. August is Women's Month in South Africa. Are the endless marches and campaigns working and worthwhile? And are our political leaders setting a good example and doing enough to address the problem? Let's get away. This Women's Day, we're honoring you. It sometimes feels like Women's Month is just another branding opportunity, another part of the year for marketers to push products aimed at women. You know, those ones that are more expensive for us to buy just because they're for women. But that's okay, seeing as we earn more. Makes sense. And while we're talking products aimed at women, we have a quick message from our sponsors. Check it out. Do you find that people think you're moody, contrary, and generally disgusting when you're having your period? Make everyone's lives easier with a new timeout maxi bag. Just unravel, hop in, and zip up. In three easy steps, you've made a quick exit from society during your days of shame. And remember, don't leave that cocoon until you're ready to emerge pretty as a butterfly. The Time Out Maxi Bag has changed my life. Period. Oh my gosh, how much is that? Where do I get it? I need that. I need it. But in all seriousness, the real reason we have Women's Month each year is to both highlight the continuing struggle for gender equality in South Africa and to commemorate the August 9th, 1956 Women's March. Over 20,000 women marched to the Union buildings in Pretoria to protest against past laws being extended to women. Although apartheid past laws may be behind us now, the 2018 lived reality of women makes us wonder if Mad Men was really set in the 1950s after all. So when dinner was finished, he simply said, let's get out of here. So I'm not that kind of girl, but we were in starters. After having some drinks over dinner with Mr. Yamaguchi, I suddenly became unconscious. I have a private room upstairs where we can have the rest of our meal. Why is it that every time a man takes you out to lunch around here, you're, you're the dessert? But what really sets SA apart from the rest of the world are our shocking gender-based violence statistics. Africa Check confirmed a woman is killed roughly every four hours in South Africa, with about half of those deaths being at the hand of an intimate partner. We asked Lisa Vetton, a gender violence specialist, to help us understand what is going on. There are very many causes and it's very difficult to try and isolate them to any few. Things like living in a society that tells me as a man I am entitled to expect a woman to clean up after me. Possibly where religion encourages me to also have particular beliefs about men's and women's roles. That I live in a society perhaps where there are very few jobs available, the economy is poor which increases my stress. The total shutdown was a series of marches to protest against gender-based violence that took place across South Africa on August 1st. We have not just had enough, but we're fed up with the amount of gender-based violence happening in this country. Women are being killed every day. I'm really sick of the fact that it's expected that it's my job to protect myself. My drink was fight a few years ago and I actually conceived from the incidents and I kept my daughter. So I want all of that to stop. We're here to support the struggle of women and girls and adolescent girls in this country who are fighting for their rights and in some cases are actually fighting for their lives. Men are not held accountable in this country. We can hold the government accountable. I no longer want to tell my daughters to be safe. I want the men to know how to play so she doesn't have to be I am here to listen to what these women have to say so that I can go as a member of parliament and go in there and speak louder about the issues that face women. The organizers also demanded that the march be an apolitical activity, but that didn't stop some marchers from donning their finest political regalia for the occasion. Which political party do you think is least attentive to gender equality? None of the political parties are. If they were, they should have been here with us. Not to mention the ANC Women's League members who took things up a notch by deciding if they couldn't show their true colours, they would show their true colours and hold their own march separately 
on the exact same day and in Cape Town at least at the exact same spot. I do not think that ANC having a march right now is necessarily problematic because initially this is a women's march, meaning you can be a woman and still be in the ANC and that still be okay. They should have been women first before they became a political party. As a quick reminder, this is the same league that unwaveringly stood by Jacob Zuma throughout his rape trial and failed to criticize convicted women beater and former ANC MP Mduduzi Manana for months. The league's president is Smolanyana A. Eh, skeletons. Matabi Lamini. Matabili Lamini might be the head of the ANC Women's League, but when she was in the Department of Social Development, the department chaired the Interministerial Committee on addressing the root causes of violence against women and children. They came up with an integrated program of action in 2013 it was never implemented. It's actually supposed to come to an end this year. After the ANC presidential elections last year, she lamented the low representation of women elected into the top ANC positions. The ANC has failed the women of South Africa. It's all good to lament the failure of uh, Mrs. Sulu to make it onto the top six. But as the Women's League, you never supported her. You never supported the other candidate, Malika Mbete. Much as men are not homogeneous, women are also not homogeneous. Another thing many women feel is letting them down is the Department of Women. Following the murder of Karaba Mukwena during an interview on gender-based violence, the former Minister of Department Susan Shabango told us... She was weak and hence she became a victim of abuse. So luckily, when Cyril Ramaphosa came to power earlier this year, with his promise, New Dawn, he replaced her with someone competent who has really turned things around. I'm just kidding. This is what really happened. The one responsible for women will be Miss Batabile Damini. No, God, please, no! No! Do we have a Department of Women in South Africa? An effective one? <laughs> That's a very good question. Well, the Department of Women is useless. <laughs> we don't have a Department of Women. We have people who are in a Department of Women, but they, for me, they don't exist. Because what can one? What is one thing that they've done for South African women? Who is the minister for the Department of Women? If you know, can I find a friend? You can't find a friend. Matabile. Matabile. Is it Matabile? Women. <laughs> <laughs> well, if she doesn't know, Singo Banigetina. And what is the role of men in helping to solve the crisis? The Total Shutdown March organizers explicitly ask men to stay away from the march. Most gender-based violence cases are perpetrated by men, so it did not make sense for us to march alongside our rapists, our murderers. Some guys' girlfriends have been raped prior to their meeting, and if they would want to march, why can't they? I think there should be spaces for women only and for gender non-conforming people only, so uh, I feel fine with that, actually. Um, that's not fair. Men should also be here to show the minority that uh, appears using us, that they stand with us. You never know, you could come to this space and look like my perpetrator. For, for this to stop, mm. also men need healing. Yes. Because this starts from what, what happened to that man, because our background does affect our future. Yes. Men should be involved in these matches. This is something that needs to be done by us, for us. I think that is problematic. I think women are always talking amongst each other about we are being abused, these are the issues we face, what about men aren't there? I think men are intrinsic in the conversation because they're the perpetrators. One of the things that I find quite puzzling is the way we've disconnected men's violence towards women from their violence towards each other. They should be looking at their violent conduct generally so that we can detach the link between masculinity and violence. To its credit, government held a march for men to take a stand against women and child abuse called the 100 Men March in July. And young men from three prominent high schools in Cape Town earlier this year held a march and attended a play called Hashtag Just Men, which featured an all-male cast tackling issues of gender-based violence head-on. For us, we decided, what can we do? That challenge for us was, thanks to the Hashtag Me Too campaign, that challenge was the abuse of children and women. These are some positive signs of a new male-led movement emerging to join the ongoing struggle women are leading for justice and equality in South Africa.
Politicians are also orientated towards short-termism. These are problems that you probably need to be looking at possibly between five to ten years before you start to see meaningful impact. This crisis continues unabated and it's one we urgently need to solve. What are your thoughts? Share them with us in the comments and check out the description for some helpful information and further reading. Until next time, stay woke, stay aware.